We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. In 1962, the 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, made this announcement during a speech at Rice University in Houston, Texas. The United States of America had set a goal of landing humans on the moon and safely returning them back to Earth. This effort would be called the Apollo Space Program. In the years ahead, 29 Americans would become the astronauts to travel in space as part of the Apollo program. They would commit to years of demanding schedules and training and make huge personal sacrifices. Some astronauts even lost their lives. On January 27, 1967, in a terrible fire during training, we lost the three astronauts of the first Apollo mission, Edward White, Gus Grissom, and Roger Chaffee. But determination, cooperation, and hard work would pay off. Over the next few years, four Apollo missions, each with a three-person crew, succeeded in taking humans into space. These missions brought us closer and closer to landing on the moon. It was July 16, 1969. The time had come to achieve our goal. If successful, Mr. Neil Armstrong and Colonel Edwin Aldrin would be the first humans to walk on the moon. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower clear. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. The Apollo 11 spaceship was launched with the largest and most powerful rocket ever made. It was taller than the Statue of Liberty and close in height to the tallest tree in the world, the Redwood. Number flight, rain safety is in the water. Roger, RSO. Okay. Kevin, we're leaving. Roger, how are you, Booster? We're going to fly. Good at one minute, Captain. Apollo 11 would travel at different speeds along the way, but it would require a speed of nearly 24,000 miles per hour to escape Earth's gravity. It would take three days and three nights for Apollo 11 to reach the moon. Near the moon, the Apollo 11 spacecraft then separated into two parts. Armstrong and Aldrin would travel down to the surface of the moon in the lunar module, while a third astronaut, Michael Collins, would remain alone in the command module and wait for Armstrong and Aldrin to return. We were close. The world stood by and waited. I'm going to step off the limb. The moon was now ours to explore. Over the next four years, the Apollo team made six moon landings. Twelve humans walked on the moon. Over time, the rewards of this giant leap became clear. Our knowledge about space travel and moon science grew by leaps and bounds. Dozens of inventions created through the Apollo program are used today all around the world. Things such as the computer microchip, adjustable smoke detectors, dust busters, improved water filters, cordless tools, and even joysticks for computer games. This was one of the greatest exploration efforts in human history. It is also one of the best examples of people working together to accomplish a goal. In total, nearly 400,000 people helped in the effort. 
From the people who stitched the astronaut spacesuits to the engineers who made the rocket fuel, everyone involved was part of the success. Today, people agree that the greatest legacy from the Apollo program was unexpected. We learned a lot about the moon, but what we really learned about was the Earth. The fact that just from the distance of the moon, you can put your thumb up and you can hide the Earth behind your thumb. Everything that you've ever known, your loved ones, your business, the problems, the Earth itself, all behind your thumb, and how insignificant we really all are but then how fortunate we are to have this body and to be able to enjoy loving here amongst the beauty of the Earth itself. Captain Jim Lovell, Command Module Pilot of Apollo 8 and Commander of Apollo 13. In space you see how beautiful the Earth is with its blues and white clouds, brownish pinkish continents. It's alone in the vastness of space. You see that it is fragile and you want its people to be responsible citizens because this is the only world we have. Colonel Frank Borman, commander of Apollo 8. If somebody would said before the flight, are you going to get carried away looking at the earth from the moon? I would have to say, no, no way. But yet when I first looked back at the earth standing on the moon, I cried. Rear Admiral Alan Shepard, commander of Apollo 14. From space, you can see pollution on Earth in the form of discolored waters created by people in populated areas. It flows out into the oceans. And when you see that our ozone layer is no more than an eggshell around Earth, you realize that humans had better learn to be more careful with it. Captain Walter Shira, commander of Apollo 7. It truly is an oasis, and we don't take very good care of it. I think the elevation of that awareness is a real contribution to saving the Earth. Colonel Dave Scott, Command Module Pilot of Apollo 9 and Commander of Apollo 15. We came all this way to explore the Moon, and the most important thing is that we discovered the Earth. Major General William Anders, Lunar Module Pilot of Apollo 8. Our Apollo explorers showed us how small, beautiful, and fragile Earth truly is. We learned that seeing our planet from a distance fills people with a great wish for us to be better caretakers of each other and of our planet. We proved to ourselves that by working together, we can achieve what we set out to do. The knowledge we gained about ourselves and our world by going to the moon is the great legacy of the Apollo space program. It is this knowledge that can guide us on the path of making the world a cleaner, safer, more peaceful home for all.